And what's up you guys, welcome to the Manga Grove, my name is Krisha and this is today's Theta Analysis video. Uh, today I have Sean here with me, Sean, say hi. Hey guys, happy weekend. That's right, it is a Friday or a Saturday today, I think it's a Saturday? It's a Saturday, yes. Saturday. You see, like I'm so, uh, I'm kind of lost with the days of the week guys, I'm lost completely. Um, just taking it as it goes, right? But um, no, Theta, we are going to be going over the USDT pairing as well as the Bitcoin pairing. Okay, but we're going to stick to our drill in that we're first going to start off with that Mango dashboard. So okay. I want to see what uh, Theta is telling us on the dashboard. Sean, have you been looking at Theta? Yes, actually. So somebody in the Mango Grove uh, mentioned Theta just a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. And I took a look at it. I'm like, hey, what do you know? Theta has taken back a few levels. This is beginning to look interesting. Then I went and checked the dashboard. And on the 4-hour time frame, as well as the 12-hour time frame, it is beginning to signal a trend reversal to the upside over there too. Now, on the other time frames, I believe it has been giving a short signal for a while. And that mm -hmm. has been profitable. I did not take that trade. But I am looking to long in a bull market. And hey, I actually just took a position on Theta. So uh -huh. I'm going to be a little biased in this entire <laughs> analysis. But I'm actually hoping that we see some upside um, today. Yeah, hopefully. yeah. I mean, it's looking good right now on the dashboard. I mean, what do you know, right? Theta USDT did flip long about eight hours ago. Okay, since then, it's up about about 4%, right? However, Theta BDC flipped short 16 days ago. Okay, now we are currently on that daily time frame for the dashboard. Okay, so we got that short signal 16 days ago on Theta BDC. Since then, you are up 21.03%. So even mm. the short signals have been really, really good. And those of you who are, um, you know, shorting on the Binance Exchange, you're able to catch the short side on many of these altcoins. But now the thing about trends, Sean, is that you know how a trend reverses. It first starts off on those lower time frames, Indeed. right? And then it has cascading effects. The trend has cascading effects onto those higher time frames. Yep. Now, when I did my preliminary analysis today, I noticed that uh, Theta was actually looking very good on those lower time frames. Yep. Right. So let's actually get onto that four hour uh, dashboard signal and see what Theta is telling us there. And what do you know, guys? Theta USDT flipped long 20 hours ago. Exactly. Okay, since then you're up about 3.984%. Theta BDC also flipped long, okay, 20 hours ago. Since then you're up 4.5%. Now, uh, it's looking good on those lower time frames, Sean, but uh, question is, can we see cascading effects, bullish cascading effects onto those higher time frames? I think so. There's a chance at the very least. Again, this isn't as a as clear cut of a trade as the other ones that we've been talking about that have all seen continuation thus far but um there are signs there are signs on the mid time frames specifically the 12 hour and we will get to that way soon yeah so actually let's get onto the charts now okay um i've currently i'm starting off with theta usdt uh just to kind of make sure that sean is on the same page as me okay, okay so um, we'll start off with theta usdt because um I mean, I've, I've been sort of harping on about this because, as you know, as long as Bitcoin is moving in a more, you know, in a sideways direction, it's more like a consolidation kind of price action. Um, for these altcoins to be trending, okay, against Bitcoin, Sean, I'll be looking for some strength on the USDT charts. Indeed. Right? That's why I want to see what the USDT um, chart is telling us. Now, okay, so Theta USDT doesn't really have much price action on that weekly, so let's actually move down to the daily time frame and see what it's doing there. Um, Sean, have you caught anything on the daily time frame for Theta USDT that you want to talk about? Um, I've been looking at the Bitcoin chart for the most part, so I'm not going to have too much, uh, too, too much value to offer over here compared to uh, perhaps you, but um, hey... <laughs> If I were playing this purely on the daily, I would not be taking the trade here. That's what I would say. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm noticing a couple of things right off the bat on Theta USDT now. now okay. Now the first thing, well, the cloud is green. Uh, that's the very first thing, right? Uh, we have that bullish TK cross is still being maintained right now. And um, in terms of pattern plays, okay, on the daily time frame, I am actually seeing a pattern play here. Okay. okay. I believe it's like a channel of sorts. Um, or like a falling wedge or something at play, but I'm seeing something here. 
um, put on my volume. So what are we looking for, guys? We're looking for that descending volume profile, and then you have a break right here, okay, that we got um, yesterday. So I do believe that this is sort of, you know, playing out right now. Um, and let's go and look at the measured move. If this, uh, you know, if the measured move does end up panning out for this pattern here, I think theta USDT could go back up to 36 cents. Okay, mm -hmm. now that is going to be the measured move for the pattern play. However, if you just go ahead and switch that uh, Ichimoku cloud back on, okay? Now, I want you to zoom out of your chart, and you'll notice, and I'm actually also going to put on the 10 simple moving average, okay? And you'll notice how um, Theta trends really, really well on that 21 EMA as well as that 10 SMA. Especially the 21 EMA, yes, especially that 21 EMA and that 10 kin. Right, so it's been um, it's been a very very sweet trending chart on those levels. Those levels have been a good guide. And um, what do you know, guys? Right now, it appears that Theta USDT is hovering over not only the 21 EMA but also the 10 SMA on the daily. Okay, if we see that daily candle body close over these two levels, I will at the very least be anticipating a move all the way up to the Kijun at 33 cents. So I'm beginning to see that the chart is very, very similar to the Bitcoin pairing. The USD pairing is very similar to Theta's Bitcoin pairing. And like you mentioned, Krisha, the weekly doesn't have enough time, uh, enough price history, right? Yeah. So it's not, wouldn't be prudent to be using the weekly. In those sort of situations, a quick tip for the rest of you listening, in those sort of situations when there's no price history for the weekly and um, I'm still looking for a higher time frame play, what I do is I divide the week in two, right? So basically, what is um, if you divide the week in um, half, you'll get around three and a half days, right? So we we can look at the three and three and a half day chart, but um, I just look at the three day chart to make my life simpler. And if you do switch on oh. over to the three day chart, Krisha, you're going to see that it's very similar to what I was essentially looking at on the Bitcoin pairing. We did get picked up on that three day twenty one EMA on um, the three day chart, right? So the three day twenty one EMA is likely going to be a dictating factor for the long-term trend on theta usd yeah yeah no this is this is looking um on the three day i do believe that there are still levels to be taken on for this picture to flip entirely um in bullish territory right uh for for starters i want that 10 estimate to be taken out once again i think if theta can start doing that on the three day time frame um you know this does have there's there's light at the end of the tunnel for the bulls that uh, no, essentially, I, I like I've mentioned to you, Sean. I like bringing this up because I want to see where the strength is going to come in for the USDT um, chart for the USDT pairing. Yep. Right, and I do believe uh, the first sign, guys, is going to be on that daily. If we manage to close over the twenty-one EMA and the ten SMA, I think that's going to be the first sign of some sort of uh, resurrection. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, it's looking decent right now. We're going to wait on that candle close for the daily. But actually, let's move on to Theta BDC and see what it is doing. Now, I know Sean has uh, quite a bit of analysis on um, Theta BDC. Now, Sean, tell us what is it that you are looking at? So, like we discussed, um, we are seeing support on the three day 21 EMA. It's getting picked up over there. That was the first uh, good sign. Mm. Right. So, we don't have enough price history for the weekly, right? So we look at the three day, we can also look at the four day, but the three day is a little bit more aggressive. And I do believe that it does suit the purpose considering we are looking at an all coin over here, right? Yeah. The next thing I like to look at for all coins is the 12 hour time frame. This is the big, big one for me. And we can see that Theta has retaken the 12 hour 10 kin as well as the 12 hour 21 EMA if it closes the next 12 hour candle where it is. It's already retaken the 12 hour tanking. Okay. Yeah. Usually I'd be a little bit more patient with something like this, but what I'm seeing over here is a re a test, the initial thrust up into the 12 hour tanking and the 21 EMA. I, in this situation, I usually li like to see um follow through to the to the downside and then after a couple more 12 hour candles retaking both of them. But we are not seeing that. We're seeing bullish reaction against um, that 12 hour 21 EMA and the 10 kin. In fact, the previous 12 hour candle closed above the 12 hour 10 kin, yeah. but underneath the 12 hour 21 EMA, right? Now, if this candle closes where it is currently sitting at, it's gonna clear the 12 hour 21 EMA with conviction as well, as well as a key horizontal that I'm looking at. And I think then we have a potential C-span trade going all the way up to, well, that's around 4,000 Satoshi, right? That is a good, 45% move again on, on Theta. So yeah. it'll take its time, but it, a strong possibility there, strong possibility. 
that will be a beautiful C-span trade if we do get it. Um, um, what is the what's the horizontal that you're looking at? What's the horizontal that you have on your chart? So it's coming in at um twenty five ninety four, so two thousand five hundred ninety four satoshi. Somewhere around there. So essentially lining up very well with the Tenkin. Not exactly with the Tenkin, but lining up right there. Ah, I see what you're I see what you're looking at. Um okay, yeah, that makes sense. I mean we've taken that out, we've managed to test it, right? And now we're seeing that continuation to the upside. And not just that, you're right in that as soon as we took out that Tenkin, we actually just got sandwiched there, right? Between yep. the twenty one, I mean the Tenkin. Um, that was a strong close that we have on that last 12 hour candle and we're seeing that continuation and yeah guys I mean if we manage to take out the 21 on the next 12 hour close when do we close the next 12 hour anyways uh, it's about there's another about four hours. three yeah, about three four hours left on that but no so, this is looking good with that right we're about to close another 12 hour candle in mm. four hours so now let's go ahead and look at the four hour chart let's see what the four hours telling us it'll give us an idea on what the four hour wants to do and again, we're going to turn on the four-hour time frame, Krisha, and I want you to turn on our Ichimoku template where we have the cloud, mm -hmm. the Tenkin, the Kijun, and the 200 moving average on the four-hour. Okay, make sure you have all of that on. Okay, wow. Yep. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. This is why okay. um, I'm really, I'm really yeah. liking um, the, the chance of a possible continuation towards the upside over here. Again, guys, this is not as clear-cut as our trades that we usually take, but um, Theta is showing a lot of um, trending characteristics right now because of the overall market. And you can see that we've taken, taken out the 200 moving average. We just retested it an hour ago, like around 45 minutes ago. We may see continuation now. We have the cloud overhead, right? If we can break into the cloud, which would line up at a 12 hour candle close as well, or perhaps um, one 12 hour candle close and the next four hour candle close after that, we have a potential edge to edge trade all the way again to around 4,400 Satoshi, right? Yeah. Lining up with that 40% move that we talked about on the 12 hour chart. And look at look at this question. We have the 12 hour 200 moving average, the 12 hour 21 EMA, the 12 hour Kishin, the 12 hour Tenkin all underneath us. And we took all of that out in one um, fell swoop when we broke this descending channel that i'm pretty sure everybody can see just by eyeing it right you see that yeah. sending channel on what time frame on the four hour time frame we have like it, it, it's it's not like the perfectly drawn channel oh, yeah, of yeah, course yeah, yeah. but it's, you can it's, see it's how we just went down 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 yeah this is this one is big up thrust i'm um, just exactly. let me just draw it out on my chart just give me a minute yeah something like this guys yeah that was a this has been a powerful move to the upside man like the amount of levels that it's managed to take out not only on the 12 hour time frame the four hour as well as the 12 hour time frame um and this i want to sort of just zoom out to see how um theta has performed on that 200 and what do you know guys like look at this region light right here right so the the 200 simple moving average has been a good guide now we had a very very similar sort of setup over here where we um sean i'm looking at 18th of april 2020 so i'm still on that four hour time frame if you just go back mm. to when price was last trending close to that 200 simple moving average right you'll yes. notice that all the way from uh, april 6th going all the way up to well april 19th that entire sort of month of april uh, the first half you'll notice how price was sort of like hugging that um, 200 simple moving average yep. as the underlining support. We lost it, okay, we came back down to settle it, settle um, underneath it, and then until we took it back again on 19th of April. Yep. yep. Right, and guys, it's look at this. This has, been a, this has been a key level. Okay, it's been a brilliant, brilliant guide. I think uh, trades off of the 200 simple moving average are easy trades to manage. Yep. Uh, Krisha, since you're, since you're on the four hour and you have the 200 moving average, mm -hmm. um, open go go up to the 2nd of june 2020 as well you're going to see when theta started having its downtrend it trended down trended down trended down pretty much in a straight line until it came very close to the 200 moving average yeah bounced off it you can consider that a test got a little front run there too because the shot's so aggressive okay. right bounced off it right had a nice um decent bounce and then again lost the 200 right that yeah. was the real uh, move where we tested it and, and had another downtrending move to complete the falling channel, broke up, retested one more time, saw rejection, and now again, we finally retook it after seeing one more rejection, right? So it, it, it has been pretty important. This tone of moving average has been very, very key in dictating whether the bulls are, rather the market participants are selling into this or buying into this.
This is a beautiful chart. This is actually quite, uh, it's a very, very neat, beautiful chart, especially on its guides. You know, any guide that you find, um, like for, for yep. Theta BDC, I think it's that 200 simple moving average on the on the four hour time frame. But man, this is beautiful. So I want to check, I wanted to check something out. Now, um, on the 12 hour time frame, we have that potential sort of C span trade from the Tenkin all the way up to the Kijun. Right, that we're that we're eyeing right now. Um, if, of course, we close this next twelve-hour candle over the twenty-one EMA, okay. Mm -hmm. Now that is uh, the potential move. Twelve-hour. I want to get back onto the four-hour time frame to see if that lines up, Sean. It's very, very close to the top of the four-hour cloud. Nice. So um, that is something to note there. This is going to be such a clean trade. Damn. It's what makes it clean, and I do want to spend some time talking about this. What makes trades like this um easy to take it's not because we are absolutely sure we're going to make money on it but it's more so because we are absolutely sure where we are wrong on this trade right if you yes. start losing the four or two on the moving average okay cool that is a warning sign but for me it's when we actually lose the four hour tanking uh, sorry the 12 hour tanking as well as the 12 hour 21 ema we close underneath both of those that's it i'm out of the trade right i'm willing to take the loss Losing is part of the game, guys. You need to understand that. But you've got to take the trade setups that show up, the good trade setups, the high probability plays with good win magnitude backing them, right? And this this has a good enough win magnitude, right? We talked about how this can go up to a nice 45% move, right? It has a good enough win magnitude for me to take a little bit more risk than I usually would. Yeah. Yeah, no, this this is looking um, good. And even the, the potential win magnitude, like you, um, like you just mentioned, this is where... These, I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of the altcoins, Sean, they're posing, you know, they're giving people these, these 40, 30, 40% uh, opportunity trades. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, just take, um, which one we go, um, singles from yesterday, singular yep. DTV, like that yep. one just, <laughs> I didn't even have time yep. to finish the video, right? We pulled it up yep. on the Mango Dashboard. The Mango Dashboard gave us a long signal. And um, anyways, we wrapped up that video and I went to edit it, okay, to, to post it. And in that time, it popped what 30 percent yeah 35 percent it was and this crazy is, and this is what i mean right like usually even when you're in a bull market you can end up in a analysis paralysis state at, because there's so many opportunities and you're watching coins pump everywhere right and you tend to tunnel vision onto the coins that are just moving but there are opportunities that are brewing like like singles yesterday that are beginning to show signs and the dashboard is so good at coming in and helping you filter those opportunities exactly. that are brewing in the background that other people are ignoring because it's hard to filter. There's so many coins in this market, man. Yeah. So many coins. So again, big shout out to Moro, man. Um, you've made it a really, really, really um, breeze of a job, right? The mango way, the easy way, the breezy way to filter through these opportunities. And even, hey, if things go wrong, Again, easy to get out of these trades too and just move on and find another one, right? And that's and that's another liberating factor that we know, okay, this one doesn't work out. I'm just going to go ahead and find another opportunity very easily. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what is key to note here, guys, is when, like, for example, when, we do, we're, when we're doing our, our analysis, right, I'm always bringing up that dashboard first. I'll filter through the coins. I'll see, okay, what is the signal on XYZ, you know, cryptocurrencies and then i will go and do my analysis but exactly. what is to note here is that the analysis my ta is part of my game exactly. okay i do not just follow um calls on the dashboard or any indicator for that matter just based on you know the signal i'm always adding my ta onto it to make sure that it is in fact a high probability trade what the dashboard does for me is that it helps me filter out some of the major major trends that are yet to happen yep. okay so that is something to note um sean on the daily time on the 12 hour time frame for theta B theta bdc i'm also catching it i'm noticing a um a falling wedge um, you can maybe draw it on, on your chart. It starts from uh, 28th of May um, after that massive freaking red dump. Okay, all the mm -hmm. way down to around 3464. And uh, you can actually draw in a, a, a potential sort of falling wedge that we have broken to the upside. Not only have we broken, we've broken up, we've tested it, and we're seeing continuation. And the, um, the measured move for this falling wedge oh, will man. actually take us all the way up to 3444 sats. 
damn, I actually did not see this at all. So yeah, there you go. So this falling wedge actually encompasses the four hour falling channel. So this yeah. is going to have cascading effects. Good eye, Kisha. Packing and, queen and D. <laughs> no, what I'm really noticing about this pattern actually is how the measured move actually, um, it lines up with a major horizontal. And I'm noticing that every time we manage to take out this horizontal, have a 12 hour candle body close over this horizontal, you're seeing an immediate sort of push to the upside. And I mean, vice versa, as soon as we take it, uh, take it out to the downside, you're seeing an immediate sort of push to the downside as well. So yep. I think this is going to be uh, a key. I think this is going to be the next sort of point of resistance before we actually get up to that 12 hour Keyshin, guys. This level is at 3430 sats. Now, um, before we wrap this up, Sean, we've only discussed the bullish sort of aspects of uh, Theta BDC, Theta USDT. What are going to be the bearish aspects of, um, of this chart? Well, like I mentioned to me, it's going to be the 12 hour time frame. That's going to be uh, the first key, a key or rather the signal for me to get out of the trade if we lose the 12 hour tank and then the 12 hour 21 EMA. Big mm -hmm. warning for me is going to be us losing the 4 hour 200 moving average, but that's not going to be good enough for me to um, exit the trade. Uh, like It's going to be a big, big warning though. Hopefully that lines up with the 12 hour time frame, us losing the 4 hour 200 moving average. And then the bearish aspect, well, Again, I do want to emphasize that just because you are not in a trade or you're getting out of a trade doesn't mean that you're bearish, right? It could just mean that you're neutral and you don't want to put on any risk until things are clearer, right? Mm -hmm. When do I get bearish exactly? That's a good question. If we take out 2450, okay, that will essentially be the retest of the falling channel, Kusha, that you talked about, the falling wedge, and we'll be getting back into the falling wedge. That yes. would essentially negate this breakout completely, and that's when I'd be looking for further continuation and full continuation towards the downside eh? and uh, basically this wedge eventually going much much lower another big one for me is us losing the three-day 21 ema let's go ahead and pull that off quickly just to see where that level is coming in at if we start closing well it's lining up exactly there Krisha, um around 2400 satoshi yeah. so essentially that level losing the three-day 21 ema is mm -hmm. going to be very very key but you don't have to wait for a three-day candle close for that i think even a couple 12-hour candles underneath that level or even in fact one daily candle would be more than enough yeah. to uh essentially say you know what this is it we are likely going to see further continuation <laughs> i'll be expecting much much further down all the way down to 1700 satoshi somewhere around there yeah but hopefully it doesn't come to that Okay. Yeah, we'll take it one level at a time. And for now, this is looking more bullish than it is looking bearish. Like you said, overhead three day has the 10 SMA. If we clear that, Krisha, you are very, very right that we're going to see some further, further push towards the upside that does line up at major levels on the 12 hour two. And yeah, so it's so far so good. But I, again, this one, this one will have to um, prove itself some more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the first tell, guys, uh, what I'll be watching out for in the more immediate hours of the of the day for those of you who are like avidly, sort of actively, rather watching the chart, um, I'll be looking for the twelve hour to close over the twenty one EMA. So quickly, Krisha, before we uh, wrap the video, I do want to point out um, the one hour time frame. Just mm -hmm. uh, this is exactly what I was looking for. I'm hoping it kind of close like this. Is, it's not imperative, but if you look at the one hour time frame, you're going to see that the most recent one hour candle made a higher candle close, right? Yes. You can go ahead and draw a horizontal at around 2815 Satoshi. Got it. Okay, so if this one hour candle, the current one hour candle closes above it as well, that's going to be another bullish sign, right? Again, it's not, you don't want to look at the lower time frames and get stuck in it, but it's going to show that, hey, this is getting picked up. The bulls are looking to see it to um, buy any continuation opportunity on this chart. The one at 10 SMA has been guiding the price all the way up to that major resistance coming mm -hmm. in at around 2900 Satoshi. If this breaks through, Krisha will be essentially closing about the three day 10 SMA. So this is going to be very important right here. It doesn't need to happen right now, but if it does, I'm going to be a very, very happy man. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, and uh, that sort of wraps up our thoughts for uh, Theta BDC as well as Theta USDT. Am I right, Sean? Or do you want any? Do you have anything else to add? Nope. Nope. Okay, that's perfect. It. And um, and yeah, guys, that's it with this trade safely, trade stress free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way, guys. Ciao. Ciao.